So Group G, Tom, Brazil thought of as one of the big favourites for this competition. Do you think that's justified? I would say a firm yes, Jeremy. The talent in the squad is frightening. Clearly Neymar up front is a name most people will know, but it just goes so deep all the way through the squad. Never more obvious than when you're looking at the goalkeepers, where they've got Alisson in goals, keeping Edison on the bench. So possibly the two best goalkeepers in the world, both available for Brazil. Up front, along with Neymar, they've got Richarlison, they've got Vinicius Junior, who's been outstanding for Real Madrid, Rafinha, the increasingly impressive Bruno Guimaraes, uh, who's doing fantastically for Newcastle. They have a frightening array of talent. And Neymar was obviously very much the, the talisman, I suppose, when, when they hosted the World Cup in 2014, a much younger man then. He's, as you say, he's got much more around him now, but it sort of feels like a, a really big tournament for him. Yeah, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say this is the tournament that will really define his career, especially in Brazil and how he's regarded there. The 2014 uh, experience obviously ended literally in tears when the Brazil team were crying in the lead up to what ended up being a humiliating night for them. And then in 2018, really the abiding memory of Neymar in Russia is of his diving. Uh, it didn't really make much of an impression on that tournament. So this, you feel, is his chance to uh, take the ball by the horns and uh, end Brazil's quite surprising 20-year wait for a World Cup. Yeah. Granit Xhaka has obviously been in great form for Arsenal, but he's been the main man for Switzerland for a long time as well. Was that still the case? Yeah, I mean, he's in the unusual position at this World Cup for trying to, uh, hoping he can take his Arsenal form into Switzerland. It's often been the other way around. He started playing like he always has for Switzerland for Arsenal in recent months. He's not necessarily the main man anymore. He came back into the team after a spell out when Switzerland had been doing quite well, still riding the crest of the wave of uh, their excellent performance at Euro 2021, and uh, he didn't perform all that well. He was um, he was on in the side for a four 0 defeat at Portugal, which was a real low for this team. Um, so uh, Embolo up front uh, shoulders a lot of the responsibilities for them. Uh, they've got Fabian Shah and uh, Akanji at the back as well, Premier League pair uh, there. They're a solid team, not necessarily a sexy one. And there's quite a politically charged match in this group, isn't there? Yes, the game against Serbia will have special significance. There are a lot of players in the Switzerland setup with Kosovan Albanian heritage, uh, Xhaka among them. These two teams actually played each other uh, in 2018 as well, where it was this exact group, um, just with Costa Rica uh, in place of Cameroon. So yeah, it could get quite heated, that game between Serbia and Switzerland. And Serbia, a team maybe a bit like Croatia that are seen sometimes as dark horses. Is, is that the case again this time? Yeah, could be. They've got a lot of players who were really tipped for big things, who haven't necessarily fulfilled that promise, but are still very solid performers for big European teams. I'm thinking of uh, Milinkovic, Savic, Falazio, as well as Dusan Tadic, uh, who's captain of Ajax, obviously spent quite a lot of time with Southampton. Uh, and options up front as well. It's Mitrovic is the number one striker for them. He keeps uh, Vlahovic on the bench, uh, who uh, was voted the best young player in Syria last year for... Fiorentina. They are a lot of fun as well, so we are a little bit shaky at the back, but quite attacking, so there should be good value in this tournament. And those of us of a certain age will never forget Cameroon at Italia 90. Might we see a, a repeat of those heroics? We might. I would say it's looking slightly unlikely this time, unfortunately. They haven't got out of their group since 1990. They haven't won a game at a World Cup in 20 years now, and that was against Saudi Arabia. They are managed by Rigobert Song, who is a familiar name from uh, sticker albums of our past. But there are some debates about who is really in charge of that team. Samuel Eto is the head of their FA, and some suspect his uh, hand is weighing rather heavily on his manager's shoulders. No surprises, I'm going to go for Brazil to top this group and I will have Switzerland taking the second spot, building on their excellent Euro 2021.